Hi everyone, welcome to the second video of the snow series. In the first video we saw how to reproduce a snow particles effect in Niagara, and if you didn't see it, be sure to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. In this video we'll see how to simulate the effect of snow accumulating on the ground. The accumulation of the snow relies on a material function called the word align blend. The function outputs an alpha value obtained by comparing the orientation of a surface normal and a word space vector. If the surface is parallel to the reference vector, alpha is 1. If it's perpendicular, alpha is 0. By default, the reference vector is the z-axis, and in most cases is what you need, but any vector could be used. For example, here you can see the same object with two different configurations of the reference vector. The first one is the default z-axis, the other is a custom vector. It's crucial to note that if the object rotates, the material stays in place, keeping its orientation, because the function keeps comparing the moving surface normal of the object against the reference vector that is static. Knowing this, there's no wonder that the world aligned blend material function can be really helpful in a range of situations, like in materials applied to terrains and landscapes. Now that you know how the world aligned blend works, we'll see how to integrate it in a project. Chances are that if you are watching this video, you already have a material in your level that you want to cover with snow. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm starting from a Megascans material called Snow Covered Ground. I'm going to open it, and since it's an instance, locate its parent. Here is where I need to inject the word align blend function, specifically before the albedo input. Of course, your mileage may vary, you just need to locate the final albedo or base color calculation in your material and act there. Right click on the canvas and search for World Align Blend. Select it and then promote to parameters both the blend sharpness and blend bias. Now we can add a LERP node and connect the material function alpha output to its alpha input. For the A input of the LERP node, you need to connect the texture or color you have on your mesh. The B input instead should be connected to the snow texture. In my case, it's just a white vector tree. Now I can attach the output of the lerp to the albedo input. Once again, if your network is not similar to mine, just locate where the albedo or base color are defined. To see the new material function in action, we can play with the default values of the two parameters we defined before. The bias controls at what level the transition happens, and the sharpness controls the hardness of the alpha transition. To simulate the snow accumulating over time, a dynamic material instance is needed. And for that we need blueprints, so if you have just a static mesh in your level, replace it with an actor containing the mesh. Open the actor and uh, in its construction script, right-click on the canvas. Search for Create Dynamic Material Instance. In the source material input, I'm going to select my Megascan material instance. It will use the modified parent we saw before. Last thing to do in the construction script is to promote the output of the function to variable. Now, in the event graph, let's create a new function called snow accumulation. We'll call it several times later on, and every time it will increase the blend bias parameter we created before in our material. So, let's get a reference to the dynamic material instance we just created, and call the getScalarParameter value function. The parameter name should be exactly the same as you called in the material, in my case, blend bias s. Next, we use the set scalar parameter value function to change the bias value. Be sure to input the same parameter name as before. Now we just use the add operator to increase a little the blend bias parameter. I'm going for 0.01. In your case, a different increase value might be needed. Feel free to experiment. Last thing to do is to call our snow accumulation function repeatedly. You can do this in different ways, but I'll just go with a set timer by function name, 
hooked on the event begin play. The function name input should be called like our function, so snow accumulation. The time input should be something short like uh, 0 0.3. Check the loop in Boolean and the initial start delay and variance should be set to zero. Now we have an infinite number of calls to our function, but at some time we need to stop it. So we can just add a delay node with a duration of uh, 30 seconds. And finally, a clear and invalidate timer by handle function. It will stop our looping timer. Be sure to connect the timer handle. Compile and save your blueprint and try it. You should see the effect of the timer calling the snow accumulation function becoming more evident every second. That's all guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful somehow. If you did, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you want to take your support to the next level, be sure to check out my Patreon page in the video description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep on creating and cheers!